Hello guys. Hope everyone's doing alright. Uh, yeah, so I had a bit of a break. Um, I knew that the momentum of daily streams would eventually wear out, so um, you know, I think the last stream was on last Tuesday, so almost a week off. Maybe it was last Thursday, can't entirely remember. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna obviously continue. Um, primarily with the clothing, I'm still not really happy with how it is draping. Um, but I don't really know enough about pattern making to actually get it to do exactly what I want. So if I can't get it to work, then I'll um, I'll leave it as it is, and um, we can continue like on the, the sculpt or something. Um, but yeah, so let's get pure effort. Uh, and I should probably get up my most recent render too. So this is where we left off in the last stream. Um, so yeah, uh, we've got a basic outfit in place. Uh, the reason that I really want to continue working on the outfit is because it's not really the, the wrinkles that are bothering me, it's more that it kind of tucks in on itself in the middle, which is not really the correct behavior. Um, and obviously that will get in the way of things like the bobbles. So I want to make sure that at very least that bit is draping correctly. Because uh, the rest of it's off camera anyway. Um, but, and obviously we've got a fair bit of shading to do to actually make it look good rather than you know just like this. This feels like plastic. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll get there. Um, still a bit of work to do. There's still something going on really weird with the shading in these areas. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll figure out what it is eventually. So let's kill that. Kill that. Just quickly load up my payroll grin. Uh, yeah, so we want it to kind of lie open like this. And I'm not entirely sure why mine is insisting on closing up. Uh, but we can figure it out. Oh, that is the wrong software. Um, so yeah, let's see if we can figure this out. I'm just gonna get that on the other screen. Uh, if anyone here like knows anything about Marvel Designer, please let me know. Um, like, you know, if you know why it's bunching up the way it's bunching up. I have a suspicion it's because of this collar. I kind of feel like I might need to strip back on this guy to you know re-simplify him and figure out what I've done wrong. Um, Cause you know now I've started to get like this sort of stuff, it makes it a lot slower to make changes. Um, yeah, so it's just so weird the way all this works. And the way the pockets are attached seems to be pretty, like, backwards to what I'd expect. Um, which is extra curious. Uh, but yeah, so put that over there. And just lower the particle distance on all these guys. So that's 10. Cool, and hit sim. Yeah, I can't just unwrap this. Also, it's got a lot of um, friction with itself. So I might change the um, fabric. Let's just go to default for simulation because that's the fastest. We can always change it later. The wrinkles are broadly the same. Come on. Yeah, it's, it's, it's tons of like, it really sticks to itself. Yeah, cause it, it always tries to roll under, um, which I've got a feeling is because I'm doing this at the bottom. So let's first off try straightening this line. Uh, in fact, actually, I tried to get into the habit of using the right things to do. So let's go align to right. So that in theory will help a little bit. We can always try pulling this back a tiny bit. does seem extra sticky, right? Like, it doesn't look like it's moving correctly with itself. And I also need to figure out how the fuck I'm gonna do this type of pocket, where it doesn't look like it's actually sewn it. It looks like this 
part of the cloth is longer and it's kind of sewn back onto it, but how would that work? So I don't see any darts here. It probably is like a separate piece sewn on. Uh, hey, Ines, how you doing? Uh, yeah, I'm not entirely sure how this bit works. I mean, it really doesn't matter because it is off screen, but I still, I want to, again, one of the reasons I do these streams is to, to learn. And I feel like I'd be taking too many shortcuts if I didn't at least try to figure this out. I feel like the pockets probably need to be moved further out too. It's interesting how the top curls up more than the bottom. Um, I wonder if there's a way I can remove that. But yeah. Uh, oh, I, I also need to go in and turn off fold rendering for quite a lot of these. Um, let's see if I can remember how to do that. Oh, it's the internal lines. You can do that over it. And there's also other things like, um, I've tried to do a little bit of research off stream to kind of at least know a little bit more what I'm doing. Uh, obviously I still don't really know what I'm doing, but something I have learned about is hemming, uh, where basically um, to get kind of a reinforced edge to like this sort of stuff, what you can do is add another piece of cloth that's sewn to it and that's kind of reinforces it. It makes it more rigid, um, less likely to kind of curl up. Um, but yeah, so let's just do this. So the front is definitely too straight. When I look at this, there's still kind of a, um, the fact he has no feet, yeah. Um, I mean, obviously like the, the render stops at his chest. So really I went too far to go to the legs, but I think it may as well. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot of kind of waviness at the bottom here, which suggests I need a bit more fullness to the fabric. So the way to do that, is to add more of a sweep. So there is a tool for that in here. Um, again, actually one thing I want to quickly do, there's a YouTube channel, uh, channel? Channel. Um, that's literally just called Daniel. Um, and it's possibly the best, in, in my opinion, probably, yeah, the best um, page for Marvel designer stuff. So let me just put that in the comments. If you want to learn Marvel Designer, that guy is, is the place to go. Him and Laurie Griffiths, they seem like the best ones. Um, Laurie Griffiths is a, a more established one, but he's really good. Um, right, so how did these work with fullness? So there's slash and spread, which is the fullness tool. Let's just... Let's try, I'm just gonna undo that. Let's try doing it manually for now. What was the length of that line originally? 61. And get curve in there. Yeah, he's, he's crazy, he knows so much. Yeah, so now we get a bit more of that waviness at the bottom. I'm still getting this curl under here. Is that simply because I've got this overlap of the two pieces of cloth? So all the fullness is pulling to the side here, but there's nothing really happening at the front. 
I wonder if the um, the pocket is kind of stabilizing that too much. I'm gonna deactivate the pockets. Um, in fact, I should deactivate deactivate everything. Yeah, it doesn't really seem to do much. So why is it that it so quickly fixes itself? I want this area to still be kind of wrinkled. Which means I need more fabric here, but that would mean... Oh, yeah, that could be the issue. Just try moving this out. Perhaps it's very tedious after no exporting. Yeah, it's tedious, but most of CG is, to be honest. Feels like I'm probably butchering the um, the shape of this guy. What's the length of you? Eleven. What's the length of you? Or oh, twelve? And that one's twenty-three. All right, twelve and twenty-three. Um, I can nudge that back a little bit. That just feels, I don't know, it feels wrong. What happens if I give it a lot more curve? And yeah, it's just actually length at the bottom. This curve doesn't contribute as much as I want to think it does. Jesus. Hello there. What are you doing? Come on. Sometimes you just have to hold its hand for a minute. So the difference between these two is 60 and 51. So I'd say that's way too much. And this is still pulling backwards. So... Does the length do that? If I make this longer, does it stop pulling backwards? Okay, so I need that to be 60 long. So let's go there. And for now, let's try um, getting rid of the curve point. Oh, 
button. Right, so that's getting too long, so let's move that back a bit. Okay, so that's about the right length. So we're going to want to add a bit of curvature to keep it level. Like that. This happens sometimes. The curve tool just doesn't listen to me first time. There we go, so that's a bit more level. So why is all the curvature coming back here? Or why is all the, the loose fabric coming back here? I want less back here, so let's pull you in. That just feels like it's going to do more, right? How can I tell why it's going backwards? Oh yeah, I need to check the lengths of these guys. Nine, eight, all right, so they're the wrong lengths. That one's 22.8, that one's, okay. We can move that. Right, so next thing to test is pulling you out more and you in more. seem like just going so far backwards. Twelve. Yes, yeah, so they're almost exactly the same. They're almost the same, but not quite. But I don't see where that issue is coming from. I mean, we've got something that's closer now, but it's still not quite right. Um, let's deactivate these guys. I also need to fix the back, but that can come later. Um, deactivate pattern and sewing. So the front will probably open now, right? Yeah. But does that help at all? It doesn't, all right. So it's not the collar that's doing it. And let's just quickly Pull these out, reactivate them. Oh, hello. And it's curled over. So the pockets are doing that. Or am I just getting really unlucky? It's so hard to tell. Okay, how about rather than sew these buttons, just going to tell us sew. Let's delete uh, that sewing. One of these is angled, do I remember why? Okay, so what happens if I sew, um, oh that's right, yeah, okay, so let's just quickly make a similar angle on you. Cool, so it's not one to one, but that doesn't matter too much. So let's just quickly sew these together. Okay, so the fashion in which that's tied doesn't seem to have much of an effect either. Okay, 
Okay, so let's undo that. There we go. So, what could be causing this? It's so weird. I need to make sure I mute Facebook actually. Cool. So, um, okay, well, there's way too much of this shit at the back, so let's let's fix that. It's also getting too short. Um, so let's just pull that. How is that happening? <laughs> I. I I don't understand it. Is it because of the left difference? Why is it so much more full back here? just his pose. Trying to move backwards. Doubt that's just how these guys are at the back. Is there some kind of trick that I'm just not understanding? I mean, there's a lot going on here, but it just doesn't feel right. So, line gun. Is that a seam line? Right there. Is there a dart that should come in from there, maybe? Let's try adding a dart. What's the button for this? Oh, that's internal lines. Is there a dart tool for external lines? No? Alright. Oh, that's not what I want. Um. Which one is it to add points? X, that's the one.
So that would allow me to pull this forward. So the length of that, okay. So I need to add two to the length of this guy. Straighten them out. And let's just quickly delete the sewing. All right, so that's sewing over there. All right, cool. So delete that. And then we need the M to N. Cool. Hit enter. Um, then U to U, enter. And then. Okay, so we need to delete the sewing on this side too. So U to U, then M to N. So U to U and U. How's that sound? Maybe it's an artifact, but I don't know. I feel like it, this wrinkle ends there, so does that one. This one starts around there. It just feels like there's something going on in this line. Let's try moving that further through. Um, I'm gonna delete the pockets. They're just getting in the way at the moment. They're quick enough to remake. So then we can do this bullshit, right? So it needs to be more subtle than that. But, all right, tell me if I'm an idiot, but this bottom section has way less fabric than this top section above the pocket, right? Or am I being stupid? It looks like it's just got so much less. Well, it is the, pa the pocket's using it, so maybe that's the issue. But, I don't know, just something feels off there. I'm so unsure. It's just such a weird bit of fabric. I wonder how that fabric is sewn in. It doesn't really give us any clues. It's so hard to tell what's an artifact in the photo. Because that, that's definitely sewn. That you can see like a little bit of like beading or something. Or not beading, that's not the right word, but something that's kind of mounting up there. I don't know, maybe I'm overcomplicating it with this. Hey dude, how's it going, man? Uh, it's going all right. I'm really struggling to figure out why 
there seems to be such a big difference in below the pocket and above the pocket in terms of the wrinkles. So I'm kind of breaking my brain a little bit, to be honest. I should undo until before all this. Align those to the right. Um, let's do that as well, actually. So let's try to figure out some of the other stuff. Let's let's work on the sleeves for a little bit. Let's take a break from this area. Cause this <laughs> this rolling under thing is, is driving me mental. And I don't even have the, the slightest idea as to how to stop it doing that. That feels like it's stretching really weirdly. And I know the button is fucked, but like Can I put this on its own layer? Well, I can, but like, will that help? Yeah, Button's still not having a great time. towards the bottom, that might be what the issue is. Um, okay, so let's grab um, put you I need a bigger button, but let's, let's just get them in the right place for now. Zero. 
So now, why does this curl out so quickly? Oh, it's because it's being pulled in, isn't it? But I do need that. Well, I guess that is what this is doing. So I'm going to hem the bottom of this thing. See if it actually makes a difference. Um, it doesn't look like it'll make much of a difference given. I, just, I really don't like this. Like, and that's literally a weirdly symmetrical hand shape. Like, I don't like that it's doing that. Uh, but I said I'd leave this bit alone and work on the sleeves. So let's do that. So, sleeves. Looks like I need this side to be like way more bunched up. Like a lot more fabric on that side because it's got all this stuff happening and that other side is fine. So let's do that first. And the easiest way to do that would be to grab these two sides. Come on. Let's just straighten these out for now. Not too worried too much about making it symmetrical. I just want to see if this general change helps. I guess another complication I've got is I don't have a hand to like hold this up. So I may need to um, make a pin or something. I don't think doing that was the right way to do it though. What else could do that? Elastic maybe? And that's gonna affect both sides though, right? Let's just push it to an extreme. Yeah, that affects both sides. So I don't want that, but we don't want elastic. Now we're also getting a bit of an issue with the, um, the sleeve angle. So let's um, align right. these to the right. So the back one needs to be somewhat shorter. What's the length of these lines? 23.39, 23.4, okay, they, they don't need to be any closer. So do we need to like hollow out the middle of this arm? do that because it's very visibly like a, a thing here let's um match up uh doesn't really matter right oh wait no it does matter um to start no no way to end the wrong way, why does it keep doing that? To center? Oh wait, I'm an idiot. Match up to center. There we go. So let's add a little bit of curvature to these guys to fix them up. Let's start adding curve points. Um, so V. So they need to Oh, 
little bit better. Cool. <laughs> so let's uh, fix this back up. to make the inside of these arms shorter. Oh, that'll be what it is. All right, so these aren't vertical, though, is the problem. They're currently the same length, aren't they? No, they're not. Okay. So I can just... to this guy. There we go. The coach has got a bit weird. <laughs> need uh, more res. It will do eventually, but I'm still trying to get the general drapery. Um, so I'm not entirely sure how to do that. Unless, uh, how do I pinch it? So I don't want to attack. I just want to grab each sleeve and pull it up. Not gonna let me do that though, is it? Uh, well, the length is about right. That's that's the annoying bit. Is that I just don't have a hand to pull it up. Let me just search how to pin. Um, Marvelous designer pin. There's a button for it. Pin. that isn't... Can I do it with an elastic line, maybe? Wait, would that have been done? That wouldn't have been done, right? Elastic lines pull the sleeves up. Uh... 
Um, okay, well, I know that I want to try having this bottom section. Um, so let's keep that line. And let's just find trace. Trace pattern. That's not a complete line. Oh, I thought this is a different line. Cool. And then let's um, flip the. So that on actually. Let's grab you, superimpose under, and invert the normal. And then let's just make sure that um, custom angle good. And we'll do the same for the other side. In fact, we can symmetric pattern that over. I uh, suppose under. And then one, here's something really fucking cool that um, Daniel pointed out, which is if I show the um, the wireframe of this guy. One of the things that is really interesting is that there's a line of topology that follows the internal lines. Uh, annoyingly, the actual internal line hides that. But if I want, um, basically, these internal lines create their own topology, right? There's, there's not really much I can add to that. But what that means is if you need more resolution in a very specific area for a very specific job, you can use internal lines. So the way that, again, this is Daniel's thing, not mine. I don't want to take his credit. Um, areas like this, where you want the fabric to fold over itself, you need resolution to do that. So what he likes to do um, is select this line, offset, uh, as internal line and just add a bunch of little offsets and give it a small distance so let's just say two and that now means we've got all these little lines of polygon you can see how we've got more triangles there now uh, you see how we've got um oh, it's freaking out so you can see now how we've got all these little triangles down here and that's because it's now got more resolution in that very specific area which allows it to roll better it's a really cool trick. I will turn off internal lines. Um, that's not it. Yeah, there you go. It's such a cool little thing. I do need to turn off fold rendering for all these. slightly change the behavior. Yeah, it will change the behavior in that it's got more polygons, so it will um, be able to do more. But it just means that you get a much nicer line. Because if I didn't have those, it would get it would be wider, like it would be a um, much less crisp line. Um, and obviously we want a fairly crisp line. Uh, I'd assume the cloth solver constraints would depend on top. Uh, I'm not sure what bit specifically you're referring to there. Um, so I can't really say on that. But yeah, but um, that's um, his way of doing hemming and it really, really works. Honestly, it kind of scares me. Um, 
So I'm going to do the same uh, offset internal internal line. We only want one, and it can be a perfect. Let's just say three centimeters. And let's for a moment turn that back on. Yeah, that could be that. So let's do the same thing. In fact, we'll run around and do these as well. Um, offset as pattern. There we go. And all I want to do is go back into trace. Internal springs and stiffness. Yeah, it will definitely affect it, but it affects it in a way that we want it to. Um, it affects it by making the area sharper because it's got more topology to to use. Because without it, you get a much softer kind of rollover. Cool. Uh, we'll do the symmetric stuff in a sec. Let's just go around and get all these. Oh yeah, you're symmetric, aren't you? Okay, let's um How do we cut that middle line again? Um That was merged. I can just add another internal line and cut it back out, but um, let's do that. Um, cut and sew. There we go. But that's still symmetrical, so all that's good. Back into this guy, so now we can actually. Trace it. Let's quickly sew those on. Cool. And then let's go into these, flip the normals and all of them, and superimpose under. So flip normal, superimpose under, and then Symmetric paste. Oh. Cool, and then let's just symmetric the sewing. Symmetric pattern with sewing. Symmetric pattern with sewing. <laughs> Think my internet's back. Right, it's back. Oh, well, that was frustrating. Uh, internet dropped out for a minute there. Not entirely sure why. Um, but yeah, anyway. So while the internet dropped out, because it dropped out for about a minute, um, I just quickly sewn these hands on. Nothing really major happened. I think I need to Oh, you got fucked up, didn't you? I think 
I saw that then. Just let that unfold itself. May have to superimpose it and then put it back under. So other than the baubles, I think I've got everything now. And the pockets. Let's just do a quick test run with a higher resolution. Oh, and we need to change the fabric first. So I feel like I need to quickly search a few of these materials and find out what they are. So let's search um, muslin or muslin. I just want to see what they look like because I don't know what these fabrics are. Oh, muslin's actually what we need. Um, funnily enough. Alright, muslin um, Oxford. Cool, and then let's throw up the resolution. So let's go to three, I think was the number. Yeah, that was fine. Cool, how many polygons is this now? Fair few. So let's go back here, start that simming. I'm just gonna leave that cell for a moment. So what I'm questioning is how much shorter should this actually be, like this collar? Cause there is clearly a um, elastic there, but like where should that elastic be? Because I think I've done it wrong. Also, it might not be the right material. I'm not sure that's the right material to use. Even though visually it's the material I want to use, it's not wrinkle-wise the type of material I want to use. So let's set, I'm going to set these to a particle distance of 5 so it doesn't choke too much. 
Like, do I need to change the thickness of the material? Oh yeah, that's quite thick. Um, let's set it to one, see what happens. Material, but it's interesting at least. I think making a thinner material helped. As in, like, literally making the material thinner, not picking a different preset. Uh, so let's change the preset. So, what are the other types of fabric then? Yeah, let's just kill that for a moment. So, obviously, cotton. Let's search cotton sateen. Cotton sateen is not too bad. Let's give that a look. The nice thing about this material is it's a lot less resistant to um, creasing itself. This isn't changing. That means that um, there'll be more wrinkles on this side. Not quite. Let's go more extreme. is hollow this out, which would not make any real world sense at all. Or I can just not get this in Marvelous and do a bit bit in sculpting, which I think is the path I'll go down.
cool. So I just have a quick look at the play count. Yeah, I should be more than enough to get the resolution we need. Or to get the shapes. So let's set you back to that. And let's actually check our thickness here. Then I'll, I'll throw a pocket on there. So let's just quickly. So that's the actual thickness of our. Um, that's actually still perhaps a little bit too thick. How thick should. Um, let me search cotton sateen thickness. I feel like maybe a millimetre is too thick. Let's, um, let's try reducing that just a little bit more. So let's go 0 0.5, well half is quite a big difference, but... So maybe that's too thin, but I feel like that's probably more accurate than what I just had. And that will again like sharpen up those creases a bit. And then I'll need to, you know, sculpt over that to make it even sharper. Then model in the baubles. The shadow resolution is so low. Right, so. I love how I probably should have smoothed the um, smoothed the base mesh a little bit because it's actually showing up in our um, in our fabric. It's not too late for me to do that, right? Cool. 
Thanks for that. Oh yeah, I forgot, I need to move it up. Is it possible for me to offset this in here? Let's just add a... Um, yeah, one mil's fine. Is it possible for me to move him up? Oh, there's a smooth. smooth avatar button. <laughs> um, so, let's just quickly, I think it was 80, right, and we moved it up. Yeah, it is. Export selection. <laughs> You're laughing at the um, his head being through the bottom of this thing. That'd be a really cute project to do at some point. It's like two kids in a giant coat. Wait, it was able to figure out the fucking arrangement points this time. What made this time so special? How do I hide them? Alright, so now I can resend this and it will fix this shit. Um, what's the skin offset? The skin offset is still too big, so let's say that's a 1 mil. And then send this. I feel like cloth, uh, cloth is off. I uh, hope you had a nice start to the week. Yeah, the, the cloth isn't quite right. Um, but it, it, it's so weird. Like, it's so difficult to get this look. Um, and yeah, the Monday was good. How about yours, man? Uh, but yeah, like I feel like in terms of... Um, in terms of the sewing pattern for this, like... I, it's hard for me to figure out how this should work because there's visibly some kind of seam along the top of the arm. That's what you expected, but there's a seam along the middle of the, the arm. There's no visible seam on the actual shoulder. So it, it's so hard to tell like if, um, you know, what needs to change to make this work. I really don't know what it is that will make it work, but what I'm going to do is, I'm going to export this as a temp, then we'll work on the, the head sculpt a little bit. Because it's better than what I had at the start of the last stream. It's also going to be insanely heavy polygon wise. Let's put that back on the other screen. Yeah, I haven't quite figured out yet how to get rid of this stuff. Also adding the, the, uh, the hemming has uh, had an unintended side effect <laughs> of doing that. Um, I want to say I find that more visually appealing, so I'll probably keep that. Hey, 
Hemmings just add a bit of structural rigidity, basically. Yeah, it's 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 massive, right? It, it's so hard to tell because this this side is hanging vertically, so you know his body is probably more like there and here. So maybe he's wearing something really thick and padded below it to get this extra bulk. Um, with him, it looks pretty normal, but it's so hard to yeah. It's a very strange one. I'm definitely not a good enough marble designer artist to to get it working. Um, so. Yeah. Let's get this into our scene. How long is this song? Jesus. Oh. It's stuck. Um, I need to close and reopen Spotify. Because my internet dropped out earlier, it got really confused. Still offline. Please go online to load home. I am online. I'm literally streaming. Do I have to close it and reopen it? Let's try um, settings. Sorry, I'm just trying to figure out. No internet connection detected, but it's right. I'm literally streaming as I as I listen to this. Um, Okay, let's go into my task manager, as the details, can I find Spotify in here, no, interesting, if I can't get this sorted soon, then um, why? Log back out, log back in, maybe. Firewall might be blocking it. All right, I'm gonna have to go without music for the rest of this stream. So I don't want to be messing with uh, firewalls and stuff while I'm on stream. Um, well, just for lack of music, you guys can uh, get your own background music, I guess. Uh, let's get this exported. Export OBJ selected. Uh, body outfit geo. Then. And then in my Maya scene, am I referencing this? Or do I have it imported? Okay. So let's get that imported now. How big is that file? It's not as bad as I expected, actually. So let's get that to minus 80. Sign system material, pop outfit, man.
and we'll need to get a fair bit of cloth looked over to get this to look right. But it's looking a lot stronger. Just quickly, uh, cool. Uh, so let's do a quick test render of this. Try Spotify again. We got in this time, and it still thinks I'm offline. Huh. I guess it's not going to stop at anything beyond. Um, it has to be a way, one sec, let me just Google this quickly, apologies for this, Spotify offline Second, now yeah, settings playback. Let's move this over. Um, Say anything there. No, all right. Fuck you, Spotify. Um, so let's get back into my. Oh, yeah, we had this issue as well where this stops rendering. For some reason, this keeps happening. So that's what the mesh was doing at one point. So let's quickly just line these back up. That's not quite right, is it? I feel like adding the, the hemming down here was probably a mistake. Let's quickly try deactivating those. Sorry. 
get that swimming. <laughs> well, we're not working on that anymore. Um, I've already saved it though, so all good. So, what's the next bit to do, I guess? Um, we could start on sculpting a bit more of the face. Or we could like do a super quick retopo test on this guy. Let's duplicate this guy. Give that moment to do a swing. It's really struggling. Let's kill that. Let's just let him crash as well. <laughs> Get the brush open. Just gonna kill my screen for a moment so I know that something isn't gonna pop up. Um, just hide that. I keep the audio one. I just want an uh, open file. Um, Alright, cool, nothing's popped up. Projects, personal projects. I know the screen's still off, I'll turn it back on as soon as I found the file. There we go. So, we need to start getting the asymmetry of this guy. still crashing. Come on, my. So, uh, I guess we're sculpting now. Um, so we need to start matching up to this guy. So let's create a layer. Uh, requires higher subdivision level to be active. All right, fine. Uh, name. Cool. So I really want to. I can't do it the highest subdiv. So I'm just going to have to kill that and keep backups. Or I can free transformation. Wait, actually let's do that. Subtool, uh, no, geometry, sorry. Uh, free subdivision levels. Go into layers. Now create a layer. Then geometry. This might take a moment. If this crashes too, <laughs> I'll be so upset. Let's just quickly check on Maya. Then Maya's completely dead. All right, so task manager, let's kill Maya. I'm gonna give ZBrush another moment. Although I am waiting in Test Manager to assassinate it. Ooh. 
So it's easily built up 8 gig of memory right now, so it's, it's doing something. Yep, yeah, there we go. Um, wait for program to respond. Hey, there we go. So, question, does that work with layers? It doesn't. All right, so be it. So we're going to start sculpting this guy finally with the asymmetry so what's the first that we want to try to figure out um, let's do that because I don't want to move you um, It's going to be so tricky to get it to feel right. This bit's completely smoothed out, isn't it? Oh no, sorry, it's, it's completely rounded out. So let's just get U set to zero. And let's decrease you as well. Oh, I should have stored a morph target. Cool. Um, morph target. Let this go, please. There we go. So we've got morph target this time, so we can go back to it when we want to. Let's just lift this up, push you to the side. You need to be more open, if I remember correctly. Let's increase the focal shift of this a little bit. Increasing the focal shift with a move brush allows you to get like a much softer change. subdivision level. I really wish I had music right now. I 
modifiers. We're going to need to hollow this area out, I think. And this area up here needs to be bulked up. So we're pulling more towards the spit. Going to stroke, um, lazy mouse, lazy step. Let's reduce that. Not point not one. That makes the brush about five times stronger, but it also makes this stroke smoother. Okay, so move. Pull you in, pull you out. Cool. So we need to pull this side. That works a bit better. needs to come down as well I think. Let me just focus on sculpting this fill up bit first though. So obviously the most identifiable thing that we have to do is this right eye, which is just like crazy. I also kind of need to pull that to the side a little bit. So this is gonna be difficult. Let's just start by pulling you down. The difficult bit about this isn't going to be matching the shape. It's gonna be matching the shape while also not destroying our topology. I feel like I should probably make some poly groups specifically for sculpting this. Let's just uh, get these loops down. So the edge of our eyelid has got a bit loose, so let's just pull these down. I'll fix these loops in a moment as well, get the ridge of the eyelid back. 
stuff like that is super easy to fix. You just go over it with relax, stop mode, and then round it out a little bit after. So then let's mask all of this bit closed. And then we want to inflate this over. Um, so let's get all this too. Probably would have been easier actually just to mask this area, but yeah, we're already too far gone. Um, See, it looks like it's all super smooth, so. Let's just inflate that over. too much. Let's go back to that low sedative and use the morph brush to regain that little bit of structure there. So this is where it starts to get really messy. I don't know what's happening here. This is too deep, isn't it? I need to add a little bit more volume here.
and it might still be needing to be flattened out like that. Let's do that with um, the lowest sub D. That suggests that this is further forward to me. And this entire thing needs to move that way, right? That's quite a difficult thing to get right in these stages, so I'll leave that alone. So now if I go and switch. I went a bit too far on that. Let's morph brush this back. Oh, the morph doesn't keep the um, poly paint. Well, that's sad. It doesn't really matter, but it's still. All right, so the right ear needs to go down. I remember that much. Not much, like it's really subtle, but it's there. Getting the sensation of this like weighing down the the bottom bit of the eye is gonna be quite tricky, I think. It has that sensation a little bit, but not quite nailed. So this needs to go like that. And this whole thing needs to go that way. But what I need to do is get this into Maya, do a render and then compare them. It's like do a lineup. So let's give that a go. Let's um, export body um, let's just say pose. Let's get back into Maya. Move this over there. Whew. 
I think what I need to do in the future is download a couple royalty free lo fi tracks so if the internet drops out again and it messes over Spotify then I can just um just go in and play those. Uh, my license runs out soon for my can't wait to buy a new license um, right so let's import modeling um, Export it all separate meshes again. Probably one of my least favorite features in ZBrush. In fact, it does all that shit. Oh no, not export all. File, import. Blend U to U, deform, blend shape. Oh, wrong way. Cool. So let me just jump into the shader turn off subsurface and do the same with you just to speed up the renders a little bit there's a bit of a wobbliness, uh, wobbliness to the mouth here that I'm not liking too much also I end the stream I think about 9 o'clock is a good time to end it So let's go into ref cam, render cam. Still something super weird going on there. The intersection is doing that. I'm not sure. Okay, so let's just do that. Give that a moment to clean up. Uh, and while that's going, let's just save the image. Critter open. open Let's quickly save that out that's good enough file save image cool back into critter file open 
then copy this layer, paste. Okay, so this entire thing needs to move that way. Like literally the whole thing needs to move that way a bit. Okay. So what's in the right place? It is not too far off, but still needs crushing down a little bit more. So just this bit, the ear, needs to be pushed down. So let's go through and do all these. So just grab you and go like that. That should be enough. Then this entire eye needs to move over. That's gonna be one of the more difficult ones, so I'll leave that alone for now. We need to kind of slant the mouth more that way. So that means you need to you need to come that way a bit. You need to come down a little bit. Uh, that needs to go that way, right? But let's again just check that. No, so that's how the mouth needs to come in too. It's like the entire mouth needs to be more narrow. Oh, all right, so. So that bit needs to do that more, but then so the whole thing can come in. That means you need to do that. top bit. So this area here, what are you doing? That needs to come up a lot. Fuck, okay. Um, so let's go with doing that and then hollowing out here, which will achieve that line that goes up in a relatively feasible way. It is in a way a topology still follows. So that's all good. Uh, what about the outer bit on the cheek? You need to come in quite a lot. But that entire side of the chin does. So this needs to go that way. This entire side needs to go in a little bit. Cool. Uh, what about his his right eye? The side needs to come in a little bit more. Bottom lid needs to go up a little bit more. So, in total, that would mean this entire corner going towards the middle, like that. That would achieve both notes. And then, more interestingly, the lid itself is bigger, but not through position of the eye. Oh, I also need to pull that side in a bit. So, let's do that. Cool, and then let's mask the eye and just pull that up and out and back. That's gonna be such a sensitive change to have to go, go back and keep me doing. This looks like it should blend in a lot more, so let's just quickly
This lid needs to be completely inflated, right? But most importantly, you need to move it. And that's the bit I'm gonna hate doing. So, yeah, it all needs to move. So you go up like that much. You go over about like that much. So the eye itself is obviously going to have to move because that's too big of a change to do about an eye movement. Um, the crunkles I'll move in Maya. That'd be easier to do in there. Is this worth testing? Potentially. Let's just quickly nudge that in a little bit. That, in theory, should be a much closer match now. Let's give that a go. Let's do the same thing again. Invalid syntax. See, I don't want to delete the history. But I'm kind of being forced to right now. Oh, I actually started. No, never mind. Ignore that. So that's going to be an issue, isn't it? That needs to be pulled in more. Well, let's compare the rest. I feel like this bit's going to be too much. So we need to. Oh, that's too much of a triangle. That needs to be a bit flatter. That's good enough to compare. File, save as. Fine. Copy, paste layer, just move around a bit. Oh god, I still nowhere near enough in that other eye. The ears matching pretty close. The mouth is not far off, just that top corner. is just awful. Um, that should be enough. Uh, again, I'll update eye positions later. So this needs to come way in, like this whole thing. Let's just mask this area. Um, 
that's too much of a triangle, so that needs to be pulled way in. Thickness is a bit off. That bit needs to be pulled over. What else was there? There's a few subtleties that weren't right. Tongue needs to move. I think the chin's in the right place now. It's just the bit that's throwing me off is the collars moving too much. And that bottom lip needs to be a bit thicker, potentially. Oh, top lip needs to be a straight line. Currently, it's too much of a curve. Yep, that's fair. I see that. So say the middle bit here is to come way over. Cool. Uh, and was there anything with the other ear? Uh, yeah, that shape needs to change a bit. Surprisingly, not much though. So, first thing was to basically straighten that out and inflate this top bit. done that so I'll leave that out for a little while and let's just give this nostril a bit of a flare cool export pose Cool. File, import. <sighs> Moving the eyes back into place is going to be I feel it's going to be so much more tedious than I'd expect. It's not looking too bad. I wish I had a good enough eye just to do it without constantly having to directly overlay them like this. I also need to find a better way to overlay them. Obviously I could do it in something like Nuke, but Nuke is way too expensive to use as just a fucking comparison tool. 
Still more, holy shit. Okay. Well, at least everything else is getting closer, but fuck. Okay, so left eye still needs to move in. Although by the looks of things, that inner corner is getting pretty close now. It needs to go higher though. God, he was so asymmetrical. And this side is still needs to be pulled in. Although part of that, it's more subtle than I first thought. Um, and then this nostril needs to be a lot taller. I feel like the nose might need to be further back. That seems to have more of a slant, like more of an angle change. So, let's do that too. Okay, that's a, that's a bridge. <laughs> um, Maybe not quite that much. Cool. So that needs to go up just a little bit, like that much. And that inner, that outer corner, sorry, needs to go in quite a lot still, right? Yeah, God, that's such a huge fucking. <sighs> right, let's keep going. And then that needs to be flattened out. So that means that you need to come out and you need to go in. I will have achieved that. Uh, and the nostril was the other thing. a little bit nicer. You'd think that ZBrush is, is bad for tweaking individual verts, but it's actually not too awful at it. Oh, that's a bit of a... Is there anything else about that left eye? There's more of a mound here, isn't there? Wait, his eye needs to be more open. Like here. All right, well, more open it goes. to figure out some of this shit. Because it looks super thin in the render, which makes me think it's not necessarily the thickness of the eyelid, but more the angle of it, because that is coming out pretty much horizontally. Whereas I think it should be coming out at like a 30 odd, well, uh, a much lower angle. What I mean is that the inside edge of the eyelid should be higher than the outside edge. So let's sculpt that down. And that gives it a thicker look without actually changing the thickness. And this needs more of a mound, so let's do that. In fact, let's do it with a standard brush.
think that's working. So let's save. Um, Disney brush, sculpt, 17. Cool, export you, get you into exports. I swear if I have to um, go even further on this guy, I'm gonna be so upset. Delete that. Well, I'm not gonna be so upset, it's just part of the process. Let's just super quickly move these guys. So go in face mode. Just pull them both vaguely up to where I think they should go. I need this guy to help complete a circle. So something like that is helpful. Um, and I guess we're going to need the eye to look up a bit more, right? Now, I see that pupil to be way fucking bigger <laughs> and stretched, which is going to be interesting. Update for the scene. Let that do its thing for a moment. Cool. Kill that render. File. Save as. And then we'll see what changes have to be made. And I might leave it here for today. Um, open. Copy. Paste. So close. <laughs> Still no, much better. That needs to be pulled in more, which is interesting.
Either way, I think that's a decent enough place to end it. So I'm gonna put the render settings. Um, not the render settings, sorry. Um, I'm going to put these back to what they were. I'm also going to remove the coating. Uh, it's a little bit intense. Let's, well, let's say it's even more so. Um, then you, let's just super quickly bump this out. So it's not intersecting quite so much. So I think that's what the issue is. Cool. And that will do. So let's save the scene. And next stream we'll push that sculpt a little bit further. Um, maybe actually try blocking out a proper shader for this guy so that we get a better feel for how he should look. For now, let's just make it darker. Uh, what color are you? Five, seven, nine. Cool. And yeah, we'll leave it there for now. I feel like I should reference this guy in because he is pretty heavy. But let's just start that going. Uh, ah, fuck it, I'll do it on interactive. And yeah, we'll see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, hope you guys have learned something. Apologies for the lack of music and the random internet cut up. They are related. Um, Spotify just for some reason gave up after the internet cut out for that whole minute. Um, but yeah, so next stream, we'll continue to work on the face, get him working a little bit better, um, and hopefully get a little bit of cloth shading done for this body. Um, and then, yeah, we should be uh, ready to kind of continue on the rest of the project. I also need to pose the body at some point. I don't know if I want to pose it before or after retopo for the cloth. It could be worth... Um, doing it in Marvelous, but at the same time it could, uh, not the retopo, it could be worth doing the pose in Marvelous, or it could be worth putting the cloth through the full pipeline, and then end cloth simming it to follow the new pose. Um, we'll see. Um, it's not exactly easier to retopo in, in this pose, because it's asymmetrical anyway, right? So I can just work asymmetrically if I want to. But yeah, so that's going to be it for this stream. I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.